Welcome, welcome, patrons. Okay, it's about time for another update video, but as the last was just like all of 2020, uh, the dividers I usually use are kind of a bit um, funky now uh, as to, you know, which videos I'll be talking about. So today we're just doing any videos that came before the end of summer 2021 to the start of the year. So let's get on with it. Andrew. Susika says, I just want to point out that grains of light in a shaft of gold reads very different now that we've seen this new executor weapons. Willing to bet there's a connection there. Honestly, a really great call. Uh, I don't actually have anything more to add other than like, perhaps like, I don't know, I, I kind of before all this new marketing, I thought the executors would be like, I don't know, maybe a new race or something like that. But like the more information we're getting, I'm wondering if it's just like a group of elves that have a good grasp on Arlathan magic. Sviper says, Doesn't Thetis have two moons? If Mithal is the goddess of the moon and Nandrul is the sister to the moon, would that mean that Mithal and Nandrul are the goddesses to each moon? Maybe Mithal is the goddess of the bigger moon and Nandrul is the smaller one. I had honestly not considered this, so this is actually a really great idea. Going with the crazy elves made a moon theory, perhaps Andrul and Mithal had competing moon colonies. Uh, I'm not really sure why I'm trying to make Dragon Age a sci-fi, but here we are. Currency. Uh, so I missed a lot <laughs> on this video because I'm a goober. Uh, so this is just a pinned comment I made. Normally I pin one comment, but there was so many of y'all I can't decide, but two errors. Number one is that in Tevinter Nights, specifically the story Luck in the Garden, the word arum is used for gold. As many have pointed out, this is also the Latin word for gold. Latin has been a major source of inspiration for Tevin, so this isn't too surprising. If we follow that same line of thinking, then silvers would be argenti and copper would be either eris or ice. I don't know how to pronounce these. Uh, depending on if you use copper or bronze. This is unconfirmed for now, however. Number two, four of Zevran gifts include metal bars of silver and gold. There are two sizes, which imply that there are multiple denominations of bars. However, the item description doesn't say anything about the price. The medium, the medium silver bar sells for 50 silver coins, while the small sells for 25 silver coins. At this point in time, I cannot find a price for the gold bars, but we'll edit this comment later when I do, uh, as that could give us use for exchange of blah 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 anyway. Uh, I looked at the item price. Uh, while the price of silver bars could make sense, I believe the gold bars were nerfed in price. The medium gold bar costs about 2 gold 50 silver, and the small gold bar costs 1 gold 25 silver. No way they would mint bars only worth that much. So either these aren't really for currency, or more likely, having one item that equals 50 to 25 gold would be too overpowered. Uh, so yeah, those are two things I forgot in the video. Swifer again says, The strands that are used in Thetis could be referenced to a string of cash coins used in ancient fuel China and Japan, where they kept many coins, yen slash mon, on a string through a hole in the middle of the coin, a design choice that still exists to this day. While loose untied ropes were used for practicality to hold onto numerous coins, they were tied up in bundles of rope with coins that dictated certain amounts. Maybe Thetis is using a similar system with gold strands for amounts between a single coin and a gold bar. And another great comment. My only critique is that you don't see this usage in game, despite sounding really awesome, and the coins that we have seen don't actually have holes in them. But can you imagine like a Lord of Fortune just having like a ton of these strands on them, or perhaps even an in-game mechanic where you can visually tell how rich your character is by looking how long their strand is? Dragon Age Flight of the Wardens. Okay, before going into the comments, I do want to give a small update from me. Uh, now, as of this particular video, which is months away from when I posted the original, I have had no contact from anyone. And I mean, I didn't think I would. I just wanted to give like an update for people who are wondering if I ever, anyone got back to me. No, no one, <laughs> no one gives a shit about me. <laughs> I also want to be honest in that when I was editing the video, I did forget a few things. One was this image from Instagram that I found of a mural that was painted in the line area of the ride. Now what I failed to describe was that there was actually two line areas. One that you saw in the video that was for when it wasn't really busy and they didn't really need a giant line. And then there was one for when it was busy. The busy line was a place with the cool decor that I did once find a video of, but I think it actually got taken down before I could put the video together and, uh, you know, steal it from the internet. Now, uh, remember me mentioning that there were like shields that were in the ride area that you could see, despite not actually showing any, any image of it? It was from that video but I can't find it anymore. Now, if I'm ever able to find it again, I'll link to it below, or maybe I can even find it and here's an image of it now or not. 
I don't know. But I actually think it's lost because I searched everywhere when I was trying to edit that video and I could not find it. And like, it's not that big of a deal because it was like, it did show some of the decor they had. Like, I think there, I remember there was like a shield and I want to say there was even a helmet, but like, it's, I probably saw this almost a year ago. So I, I, I my memory might be rusty here, but yeah, still sad to lose a little bit of the ride. Second is that when researching for the video, I kind of wrote off the Riva digital line as completely useless as it had been defunct for a while. But after considering, I just decided to go for it because maybe I could find something useful. I was able to find actually a few animators from the company and one person who on the resume said they modeled the characters for the ride. Uh, I did contact him and he did not get back to me. So I guess another dead end, but I at least want to say that I did try. Doomware says, I suspect the well is the one hidden near the Chantry in Denerim. Guess they moved all the bodies. And I love this. <laughs> it's canon. That well has been moved to Nothan and that's where they put uh, all of the people who found out they aren't in Grey Wardens anymore down in the well. Uh, this made it, this made the situation a lot more nightmarish, actually. Like it was before it was kind of like a fun cutesy thing. And now like with the, the murder well, it's kind of dark. I don't know if I want to commit to that. It's a fan fiction. Who gives a fuck? Whatever you want to think. Old game dev advice says, well, research, pretty sure Bioware was trying to get to the props. Don't remember if biz dev succeeded or not. Okay, so for those who don't know, Mark Dara, previously producer on all the Dragon Age games, started a YouTube channel. And this is it. He's been making a lot of awesome game developer related stuff with some little Dragon Age nuggets, so please go check him out. But yeah, he was very kind to watch the video, and I guess Bioware got the same response I did, and that they didn't get any response. <laughs> Uh, I would imagine if that they were able to get something from the ride, they would have tweeted about it. Like, oh, look, we got a little piece of history for Dragon Age. Here's that giant fucking dragon or something like that. But um, they didn't. So I'm assuming nothing came of it. Or maybe it like, I don't know. Maybe it's just taking this long. Businesses are sometimes slow, even though it's been like well over a year since the closure of the ride. Um, but we at least know that Bioware did try to get some of the props for the ride. Now, he also says uh, on my video for the IDW comics, someday Mike and I may be on a panel together and really drunk and we will talk about this series. Probably not, but maybe. Uh, I just, God, I want to know the history to this stupid fucking comic so bad. Like, if you don't know what the comics are, they are just the, the worst thing ever, Dragon Age. Go see the video. But it, like, I just... Uh, <laughs> I want to know the react. I want to know the like unfiltered reaction of the team when they read that thing. <laughs> I want to know so bad. <laughs> it's, I'll never know, but that's like the one thing in this this fandom I really want to know. Eighth old god, B says. I mean, there are eight magisters shown in both Invasion and the Fall mosaics. It's hard to see without a mod, but if you pull the actual art files out and look close, it's there. Obviously not conclusive, but a very interesting addition to the theory. So this is a tough one for me because there is a break in what is said and what is shown. Sure enough, using a mod, which uh, I'll link to the mod down in the description, that highlights the different parts of the mosaics, you can sort of make out eight magisters and at least invasion. I will say that it's pretty faint and like they get pretty tiny and maybe there is a chance that one of the figures highlighted isn't supposed to be a figure at all. Um, and in the other mosaic, I'm not really sure what counts as a magister. Is it just the skulls, the bodies? This one's missing a head, and this one doesn't have, seem to have a body, so maybe he's just headless, which would then make it seven. I'm just kind of iffy on calling this proof as an eight. But yeah, despite a maybe eighth magister in these mosaics, Gatsy never mentions them in his report and even specifically says seven. Despite being very thorough on everything else in the report and what it depicts. I almost want to say that if there really is an eighth shown, they decided to change the codex later in development, but kept the art asset for some reason. Either way, something doesn't really line up here, and I don't know if it's us seeing what isn't there or something that got messed up during development. Thetis Astronomy Peckham Fool says, Katie, even though it was an Easter egg in Origins, you did miss a Superman cutscene of the older couple that found a boy from a meteor crack clash landing in Thetis. Otherwise, I love all the content you provide. Please don't stop. Well, thank you. Okay, look, I actually got a ton of these comments. This is just the first one that was left, but I did leave it out for a reason. And like, I really thought about it too. 
but we can't take every Easter egg and make it lore. Now, if you want to say I didn't mention that there were meteor crashes and Thetis, that's one thing, but otherwise I didn't really think it was worth mentioning. Um, and like, hey, like, let's say this. I didn't see a baby. There was no baby. And like me having a baby now, if you found a baby in a meteor, you wouldn't just like leave it somewhere. One of those two should have been holding the baby. So like, I'm just saying, I don't think there was a baby. Nen Bellinaris says, Katie, well, I do love your videos. There's one thing you're forgetting. The moon doesn't just go through phases. It also goes through high and low periods, moments where it's closer or more distant from the earth. Maybe the moon we see in Inquisition is slash was going through one of these periods. So this is a good point, but the difference in size between Origins Moon and the Inquisition Moon is so huge, it would really have a strange orbit to do that. And then also need to be rotating rather than locked like our moon is, because the, it looks different. Now we do know there are two moons, so while it's possible that it is the same moon, I actually think the simpler answer is that it's just two different ones. But hey, maybe it's not. Dark Fortress. Nunzio de Philippus says, so a couple things. First and most important, never let the fact that we watch these videos change anything about what you do or say. Side note, still feel awkward about it. Anyway, if things weren't perfect, and what is, you have a right to point it out. I will ask that you not blame Bioware for any of the falls and deception. Those are on us, honestly. We originally pitched it as five issues, yes, but then we were hired to write three miniseries of three issues each. If we didn't work as well in those three issue formats for the mini, that's on us for not shifting the story for the new length. I definitely feel like it's the one that suffered the most for the short length. Second, we have lots of scattered plans and half ideas for the possibility of writing these characters again. And while it passed through my mind for a second, it was never remotely part of the plan and ideas that we have a red lyrium zombie Aaron, so no worries there. Thank God. <laughs> on some level, his uh, goodbye was exactly what we wanted for him and for her, and I don't think we'd mess with it. Thanks for focusing some fandom energy on our work. I have nothing to add, but honestly, a thank you to Nunzio, one half of the writing team for the comics, for posting. BGC Vitan says, Gil, one thing that really stood out to me when I first saw it was how the sarcophagus had those taloned fingers, like, like those of Moonface that you pointed out. Their position at gripping the legs, that is, as if there is symbolic undertone, that it, the ritual, restrains the subject like it did to Fenris Leto, however it does not completely ensnare or breaks them. I just really love this artistic interpretation of the design, so thank you for posting. And that's all I have. Uh, I know it's kind of short today, but um, great video. Anyway, <laughs> do you still have any great questions? Proof that I'm wrong. Comments about your own fan theory. Feel free to tweet me at, at Gilderthon on Twitter or send a PM to user Gilderthon on Reddit. Dress your all.